So this is the third part of our series and this time we'll be um, adding constraints to the skeleton. So you might be wondering what constraints are and what they are supposed to do and the, um, the effect that constraints have on the skeleton is to um, allow controlling several bones by just a few bones. So you animate some bones but more bones than these move and um, the effect that it has is obviously animating is more easy and more simple. Um, on the downside you have to um, consider setting the constraints up takes a bit of time and um, and you also have to bake bake your animations before you can export them and but it, it is definitely worth the effort. So um where could we use constraints on our pike? Um for example um the gills. So um first remove the pose old G and old R to clear locations and rotations and so if we think about a fish when it opens its mouth a bit like this the gills would also move and the gills would move like this. So down here in pose mode you see if we select a bone or a node we can add constraints and we do that and then we get a menu of many different options and ones that I've used so far are copy rotation and sometimes track 2 and IK solver and anything else is not really important for us. Oh yeah, and copy rotation also. Um, and for for this, for the gills, we need the copy rotation because we want to transfer the rotation from down here up here. So first of all, we have to look at the axis of the nodes. Um, if we rotate this one like this, we rotate it around the x-axis. As you can see, it's rotated around the x-axis because that's the axis you don't see if you rotate it. Like you rotate it around this axis. And this is really important because we have to make sure that um, the, the rotations are transferred in the right way because we don't want to have our gills move up and down or something like that, but we want them to move inside out. So now we can fill in the constraint data and this is the target is um, the name of the object that you get get it from. Um, so this is armature. And now the bone, this is jaw. And now you see it gives a distortion and we can't move we can't rotate this one anymore. We can only move it. So um this is because of the space the constraint was performed in. You see now it is exactly the same in the same space, world space this is. So the rotation is simply directly copied without um, caring for the original rotation of the gill node. 
um, but that's not what we want. We want it to work on local space. So we go down here and select local space. And now this is better, but still not quite what we want. And we can also turn this one to local space because now if we would rotate the head we would have gotten something weird if this was in world space we can try uh, see it keeps the same so always more or less I always use local space for both options um, in some some parts like for example when you want toes to curl or something like this um, it's a bit tricky if you use just one controller and want want it to curl. Uh, yeah, but you don't really have to worry about that. Okay, so the problem now is it's rotating about um, the wrong axis. And this is because the x-axis is facing in more or less the same direction. They're both facing um, in horizontal direction and we've got to change this because it rotates about the x-axis like this. Oh. Like this. You can see the x-axis or you can't see the x-axis and we want to change that so the x-axis points up here or down here and how do we do that? We turn into edit mode and we can look up here in the transform properties and we change the roll value. We've already had that before on our on the uh, um, clear roll, no control N and this is one of the cases where we have to manually set the roll value. And now we turn back to post mode and open the drawer. Yeah, this is moving in the right direction. Only we've got to make sure the influence is not too strong or too weak. And it's moving. Oh, it's it's negative and we don't want that so we oh yeah and we can disable um, Y and Z because if you would move let's enable it again because if you would move it in this direction you would still get a movement upwards but we only want movement about the x-axis so we disable Y and Z and now if we move it, it really only moves around the x-axis. But, uh, let's clear the post, um, but because um, when we open the mouth it goes inward and we don't really want that. Uh, we we set this one to negative. So now, if we open the mouth, it goes outward, like this. Oh, that I could probably do some better weight painting there, because mm, those shouldn't really move along that much. Um, disable soft. I like this. Maybe even add a um, the gill, the actual gill could be added in there, so you you can see the red red stuff um, when it opens. But that's more matter of of, um, of rigging uh, of of the model than of adding constraints. Now you can see uh, it breathes. 
that's looking pretty plausible and now what we can do or what we have to do is to add this constraint also to the right node so we add a constraint copy rotation armature and uh, draw again and turn it to local space local space and now remove x and y uh, y and z sorry and now got to think for a second also turn it to negative yeah sometimes um, those have to be different but in this case um, they're the same so sometimes you would have to use plus uh, or not minus on the left side and minus on the right side but um, that's a bit strange depending on how you um, how you build up your your axis directions and, and stuff um, another thing we could do is to to lock um, to lock this rotation of the jawbone so it only rotates around the x-axis and not around this axis for example um, birds or I think fish too um, cannot rotate their jaw like this while most mammals they can and um, for example here I would probably lock it so um, add a constraint and this time limit rotation and again um, we want to set it to local space and we want to limit the y and z rotation and simply now turn on limit y and limit z and for transform that means you can't even try to transform it so now if you take this node you can simply by moving this node we animate the complete face and that's pretty nice because we can't we can't do anything wrong now oh yeah we can we could go we could go up there and we could also limit this using limit x and by limiting the min or max got to check so this is positive if we move it up so we limit the max and the limit min goes well, let's say 90 no 50 minus 50 so now we can all we can do is move this bone in just this range so now this is the highest range that we could go for and this is still a bit too much probably like this and this is minus 30 up here so we can put it down there minus 30 and now it's pretty nice and now we've got our constraint set up we could mm, I can't think of any more constraints that would be really useful for this pike as it's a fish and you know we don't need any IK constraints so I'd say we're done for this part and see you for the next part.